Hello everybody. I recently reached my seven year anniversary of owning the amazing Nikon D7200. And I want to give you my update and my take on using a camera all these years. And now that it's seven years old, is it still worth looking into possibly considering uh, maybe you want to use it as a backup camera or maybe even as your main camera. So let's look at that. But first of all, I want to point out that this is going to be my opinion and on my needs. And my needs may be a lot different than what yours are in your camera of choice. And uh, I was mostly a wedding shooter, portraits, that type of thing. And now that I'm retired from wedding photography, although I did use it on my last wedding and it worked out very well, I loved using it. And now that it's seven years old, what do I think? The Nikon D7500 replaced the D7200. And although I've never owned one, uh, I'm hearing a lot of people really like that camera. However, I think that Nikon made a little bit of a mistake when they made that camera because they took away some of the features. Now, why would you, if you're going to be doing a replacement on a newer, to replace an older camera on a newer camera body, why would you do away with certain things that have value? As an example, they lowered the, uh, the amount of card slots from, of course, the D7200, as you may know, has two card slots, which for if you're going to be doing event photography, very, very important. And then the D7500, they gave it just one card slot. Now, I know most of you are thinking, hey, I'm happy with one card slot. Yes, uh, now that I no longer do wedding photography, I could live with a single card slot. But I know as an insurance policy, I'd rather spend the extra if it costs more. I'd rather spend more on getting the uh, extra card slot because I believe if you're going to be in business or you're doing something like event photography, Murphy's Law states that if anything can go wrong, it will go wrong. So you have to be ready and you have to plan for it. So you know that if you either lose the card or something happens to your camera and it goes and it corrupts the card, you're done. I mean, uh, you do a really, really big, important event like a major wedding or you're doing, say, a golf tournament and you have Tiger Woods out there getting ready to do a hole in one, you got the great shot, you got the expression, then you go back and look at your memory card on your computer and what the heck, something happened. They're all, they're all corrupted, the color, they have lines going through, or you lost it. You were reaching over to wash your hands in the river and it fell out of your pocket and it's gone. <laughs> so how much would you pay to get that card back? So that's just a thought. You can take a risk. Chances are you're going to be okay. But just remember Murphy's Law. Okay, so back to the uh, D7200. Who is it for? Well, you know what? I was thinking if you're going to be starting a wedding business, say you want to do a lot of weddings, well, you're going to have to have at least, at the very least, two, maybe three cameras. So if I think it's also important to note that if money is an issue and you're on a tight budget and you're going to need several bodies, uh, that's, this is probably a good camera to consider because right now, I checked a couple of days ago, Nikon D7200 was selling on eBay for around $500 on the used market on up. And I also looked at the D7500 that was selling used on eBay. And one of them sold with a Nikon 18 or 200 millimeter lens for $900. That's the camera and the 18 or 200 millimeter lens. Now that's a fine lens. I still use mine occasionally. But I used to use that quite a bit at a wedding reception because you can go from 18 to 200 with a turn of a wrist. So something to consider. But if you had the budget, I mean, if money is not a big issue, I would go with something newer. Uh, I will probably, although I do like the uh, DSLR, I love the viewfinders and I've just gotten so used to them. But if you're on a really or if you're not on a tight budget and you can swing it, I would go with the Z series. 
uh, as an example, the Z6 or Z7, Z9, if you can swing it, that's supposed to be an amazing camera. But let's get back to the <laughs> in comparison. And remember, we're going to put things into perspective. So the D7200 is for if you're on a tight budget, you want decent quality, you want good color out of your camera, you want uh, 24 megapixels, six frames per second. Now the D7200 does shoot in high definition video. And if you need something more, then you're going to have to go into something better. Uh, Nikon Z, well, doesn't matter, starting at the Z50. But let's just, okay, let's compare the Nikon D7200, although it's a completely different animal. But say you're looking to get a good camera body that's an upgrade from your phone. Now there's a, uh, Nikon has a Z50 out. That's a lot of people, there's a lot of pros that actually purchase that camera that I know of. And they absolutely love it, especially, I mean, you can use it professionally, although it's considered an entry level. And, and these are cameras, by the way, that are a crop sensor, the APS-C size sensor on there. So we're going to keep that into perspective also. But the uh, Z50, uh, boy, that thing is fantastic. If I were looking to upgrade from a phone to something better, I would really have a serious look at the Z50. I love that camera. The camera, the uh, images out of there gets really, really very accurate color. And they're extremely sharp using, I've used it with a couple lenses, the Z telephoto 50 to 250 millimeter. And it was also, I believe it was 16 to 50 millimeter. And both are excellent lenses. So somebody looking to move from their phone photography to something a little bit better, uh, probably consider the uh, Z50. And of course, if money is no object, why stop there? <laughs> Sky's the limit. As long as you've got stuff in here, it doesn't matter. You can, you can buy the best. When I'm shooting my small product photography, I have my D7200 on a camera bracket. This way, to me, it's just easier to hold Plus, it puts less strain and wear and tear on your body. Something else to consider, because after seven years, my camera is looking pretty darn good. So what would make the D7200 really great? Besides having the two memory card slots, the extra long battery life, 24 megapixels, to me, that's enough. Six frames per second, I can live with that easy. But what if we added a tilt touchscreen? I really love using that. So if we added those features and maybe a couple more, the D7200 would be a really, really great camera. But that's the whole point, I guess. Camera manufacturers want to leave maybe something in the lower end to be desired so you move up to a better camera. And you really can't blame them. They have to be in business to survive and to make a profit. But let's evaluate everything out there. And I like doing things, or I like getting the most of something that I have instead of always thinking that I need this or I need that. So another advantage of having this camera for, for so long is that I've gotten so used to it and I can work the controls, you know, really fast. Uh, if there's a problem, I know where to look. So that's an advantage of using your camera or, of course, getting used to your camera, study your manual, and, and the more you use it, the more you're familiar with it, and it's just a lot easier to use. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope this helped you.